Good morning and welcome to the gathering at First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth, Texas. We are so excited that you are here with us, whether you're watching from Fort Worth, watching from somewhere else in the Metroplex, or wherever. We are so glad you are joining us. We hope that you'll say hi to Mr. Mark on Facebook, to me on Instagram, or by leaving your information along with your attendance if you're watching on YouTube or on our website. Lance is back from vacation, as I'm sure you guys saw, um, which is very exciting, but I'm doing this intro today because today is a really sacred Sunday in our youth calendar. As teenagers are going back to school and kids, this would normally be our youth Sunday where our teenagers lead all the worship. And for obvious reasons, that's not happening this year, but we wanted to make sure we set aside a little time to hold space for prayer and for care for our sweet teenagers and their families. This has been a season of radical disruption of a lot of sacred rhythms and rite of passage. And that's hard and it's scary. And we recognize all that and we are here for you and your young people through all of that. While I have you on mic and while um, I'm talking, I wanted to shout out real quick, our youth parent meeting is next Sunday on Zoom. So if you are a teenager, if you have teenagers in your household, please join us next Sunday at noon on Zoom. You can look it up on the church website for the exact link. We'll give you the layout for the entire fall, how we're gonna be supporting and loving your young people in this difficult season. And I'll give you just a quick heads up between now and then, the most important thing we need you to know is that we are here we love your young people, we're not going anywhere, and we're committed to finding ways to love and support them in this new season. Well, back to the business things. Like I said, register your attendance. We love to know that you are here. It makes our smile when we see your names on the list. So there should be a register attendance button if you're watching on the website. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can leave your name and who all is with your family in the comments. Um, and we'd also like to thank really quickly all of you who are giving so generously to our church during this season. You have continued to support us and support our work even while so much is uncertain. I can tell you from my department, your ties this week have bought three summer moon coffees for high school girls, four cherry limeade slushes, 50 pounds of dog food and three boxes of Ziplocs for a contactless service project and a care package for a kid in the hospital. And I think you'd probably agree with me that that is money well spent. So thank you so much for your giving and thank you so much for all of you who are tuning in today. If you now join me for the invocation, it will be listed on your screen. I'm gonna read the leader portion and there'll be a part that says uh, people that's for you to read. So join me in this invocation. We give thanks for the beginning of a new school year. Praise God, for God is good. We are excited for what this new beginning brings, opportunities to see old friends and make new ones, discover new talents and develop new skills and take a step forward in our stories. Praise God, for God is here. We are also anxious. We know this school year won't be like other ones. So much we felt we could count on now seems so uncertain and that scares us. Remind us even now that we are never alone and that you care for us. Praise God, for God loves us. We fear what we cannot understand, but you remind us that in you everything is made well and that we can have faith that no matter how scary this chapter, the end of the story is good. Praise God, it will all be okay. Amen.
Well, amen. Uh, we're so glad you're here. Again, welcome to the gathering. Uh, this, this next song is called Song of Hope. Uh, it's an old song. Um, wait, well, it depends on what constitutes old. I think this is 2007, so sure, I think that might be old. Um, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, and at one point in the verse, it says, Sing praise my soul to the maker of the skies, and that a song will rise. This song of hope and celebration of God's presence. So hope that you sing along with us this morning from wherever you are, whether you're tuned in live or later on. Um, sing along with us. This is called Song of Hope. Tasted and seen by the sweetest 
greatest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is unknown in your presence Good morning, friends. I'm so glad you're here with me today. As you can see, I brought my box. And now we need to find out what's in the box, which means before we do that, we have to sing the song, What's in the Box Today? <clears throat> All right, here we go. What's in the box today? What's in the box today? Tell us, tell us, tell us, please. What's in the box today? And in the box today are two important reminders that even during hard times like this, we have power inside us. We have light inside us. We have reasons to have joy, gratitude. We have reasons to praise God and ways that we can praise God. You know, during hard times, one of the best ways that we can feel powerful in times when we might feel powerless is to do something for someone else. Now, was it okay to feel sad that we don't get to do some of the things that we normally would get to do? Absolutely. You're a human. You get to do human stuff. 
like feel sad that you might not get to play a sport the way you would or be in a class the way you would. That's all okay. And when we do things for other people, it makes us feel better. I have an idea. One of the things you could do is make a note card and write a note to a friend, someone in your class, someone on your team, someone at church. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a couple of sentences saying hi, saying that you're thinking about them. Or if you don't want to write a lot, if you just want to simply draw a picture and say, I made this picture for you. And then actually put it in the mail, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it. Because I don't know about you, but especially during the first two months of COVID when we were at home, the mail coming was exciting. And mail coming had not been exciting for me since I was a kid. And over the summer, the mail coming would kind of break up the day. You know, people like getting mail. Most of my mail was bills and catalogs and political ads, you know, grown-up stuff, which isn't really fun. But getting a handwritten note from a friend, and not just a friend, you know who else you could send a note to who would love it? Send an encouraging note to your teacher. Oh, do you think that would make a difference to your teacher? Would that make you feel good to make your teacher feel good? I bet it would. And that's a great way to feel empowered. It's a great way to tune your heart for praise. Now, I believe with all my heart that doing things for other people is important and it makes us feel good. You know, even just a few minutes ago on Facebook, the Shives were letting me know that their kids are opening up a lemonade stand this afternoon so that they can raise money for groceries in their community, which is going to help people. And I bet it's going to make them feel good too. And I mean that with all my heart. Doing things for other people makes us feel better too. That's not why you do it, but it's, it's a great side benefit, right? So I want to show you something that we've been working on here at the church. And that is the second thing that's in my box. And it's a blanket. And it's got different colors on each side. Now, here's why I'm showing you the blanket. Because starting next week at 1030 between the two sanctuary services in the West parking lot, every child in our church, all the way down to babies, come to the west parking lot and pick up a blanket that was made by someone here at the church for you. I've been making them. Miss Janice, Miss Mary, Miss Ashley, Miss Julie, Dr. B, Dr. Mike, Phyllis's friends, including at least three people named Nancy, have made blankets so that you can have one. And here's why. We know that you've got a blanket, most likely. Anyone watching right now, you've probably got a blanket. But we wanted to give you one special. And we could have just bought blankets. But we wanted to take the fleece and make a blanket. And there's all different color combinations. Because we wanted you to know that during this time, even though we feel like having you stay at home right now instead of being in the building is important for your safety, we miss you. We love you. We've been thinking about you. We pray for you. But that can be hard to internalize thoughts and prayers so we wanted to give you a solid way that every time you wrap yourself up in this blanket, it can feel like your church giving you a hug, knowing that even though we're in our own separate places and our own separate spaces, we are together in love. This is something that we wanted to do for you. And can I tell you, I have looked forward to coming up into this building every day just so I can sit down and make a blanket that's going to go around someone's sweet shoulders. So next week, 1030, West Parking Lot, every child in the church gets one of these blankets. And if you're saying, Mr. Mark, I've already got a blanket, you don't want have one of these. And we want to make sure that you do because we love you. Bye. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Thank you all the volunteers for that incredible work of putting together those prayer blankets. Don't forget that's next week is an opportunity to pick them up. We'll have a lot more information on how to participate in that in the upcoming days. Make sure to pay attention to all the church communication. Everyone, welcome. My name is Lance Marshall. I'm one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church in downtown Fort Worth. 
Before we consider today's scripture reading and today's message, I want to extend a word of thanks to uh, all the people who are making services possible this morning, the people who are running cameras, the people who are running the computers, all of our folks up in the technology booth for broadcasting this online. I want to thank the band for leading us in worship. I want to thank the people who led worship while I was gone for the last three weeks. I was out on vacation, and it is so good to be back We didn't really go anywhere. If you had told me earlier on that a staycation during quarantines would still feel refreshing, I wouldn't have believed you, but it does. We did take two small trips. One was to my parents' house. They live on a lake in central Texas, and so we got to go enjoy some wonderful time on the water and in the lake. That was a blast. Our other small trip was to the doctor. Got a lot of kids, and there's always someone who's in need of a trip to the doctor. And so I have a three-year-old daughter. Something was bothering her. We took her to the doctor. No big deal. Went home. They sent a script to the pharmacy, so I went to go pick it up. As I'm picking it up, the pharmacist tells me, here's how you give this medicine to your daughter. Uh, It's going to be something that she drinks. She needs to do six milliliters, which is like a couple swallows, and she needs to do it twice a day. Sounds like no big deal, right? Except I'm looking at what the pharmacist has handed me. And it is gross. It is gross. This medicine I'm looking at looks terrible. It looks like it's cloudy and chalky. Like the best way I can describe it is if you took an orange dreamsicle and melted it down and then ran it through your transmission. That's what this medicine looks like. And I've got to give it to my daughter multiple swallows, multiple times a day for like a month. And all I can think about is when I was about six years old, I, my mom was giving me like Dimetap or Robitussin or something like that. I was never good at taking medicine. And I was just crying and crying and crying. And I remember her asking me, does Troy Aikman cry when he takes his medicine? And I had to go, no. And I'm just thinking, who, what sports figure am I going to give to inspire my daughter to take this medicine? So it's time to come give her that medicine the first night, and it looks disgusting. I have to use it, and they use like these like oral syringes to measure out the right amount so you can squirt it into their mouth. And it's so gross, and I'm hyping her up, and even though I know it's disgusting, and, and I hand it over, and I give it to her, and I'm prepared for World War III. I'm prepared for tears. I'm prepared for a meltdown. And what happens is she takes it, swallows it, wipes her mouth, and says, Dad, can we go watch Moana now? It didn't phase her at all. It was incredible. You would have had to tie me down to get me to take this medicine when I was three years old. And she takes it like a champ. It was just incredible. I was so thankful for that. I was like prepared for a half hour of tears and battles twice a day for a month. And nothing could be farther from the truth. And then I was thinking about it. You know what? Not only am I thankful for her and how good she is at taking medicine, all my kids are good at taking medicine. They just happen to be. We've got a lot of challenges in our family, but medicine taking just doesn't have to be one of them. Our oldest has always been great about taking medicine. Our second to oldest, I have no idea if he's good because he's never been sick or hurt ever a day in his life. He's built to like military grade. Even our baby is amazing at taking medicine. I was thinking about six months ago, our baby had to go to the doctor, had an eye thing that was bothering him. You know how babies always have an eye thing that's bothering him? So I go to the doctor, and we get a script, and they send me out to the pharmacy, and I go to pick it up, and I tell the doctor, I'm here to pick up some eye drops for my baby. And he goes, here you are. Here it is. But I need to tell you, it's not eye drops. It's an eye gel that you need to give to your baby. And I said, what does an eye gel? And he says, you just need to take this gel and hold open your baby's eyes and like smear it all over the eyeball. I'm a grown man. That sounds terrifying. And just the first thing that came to my mind, I asked him, have you ever met a baby? How do you think this is going to go? So about six months ago, I remember I had my baby and his eyes are bothering him. He doesn't feel well and I've got this gel and I'm prepared for World War III and I'm prepared for it to be a battle and it's just not a problem. It's just not a problem. He just takes this eye gel like it's a perfectly normal thing to have happen. It, it blew my mind. And so over my vacation a couple weeks ago when we were starting all this, I happened to have all four kids around me, you know, because we're all brushing teeth and it's bedtime. And I just stopped and I, had, I told these kids, I have to tell y'all, you are so good at taking medicine. 
and as your dad and as, as a person who's a part of it, I mean, y'all are so good. You make this so easy. You make this so smooth. I am so proud of you. You are so special. You are so good at this. Thank you, thank you, thank you just for being you. I appreciate you so much. You know what they said? Dad, can we go watch Moana now? Didn't really phase him much. But it got me thinking about thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving is appreciating and recognizing something that's wonderful in your life. My kids being great at taking their medicine is a wonderful thing in my life, and for that I'm very thankful. It's good to be thankful. It's healthy. But if we're just thankful, we've stopped the process halfway. Because thanksgiving is recognizing what a difference it makes for us, how powerfully we're being impacted. We're recognizing good news in our life. Praise is completing the cycle. It's sharing it with the person who makes that thanksgiving possible. If it's just thanksgiving, it's just stopped with you. Praise is the full cycle. It'd be one thing for me to have recognized, man, my kids are amazing at taking medicine, and in fact, it'd be it that evening. The full cycle is praise. Letting the ones who are a blessing to you know what a difference they've made. Thanksgiving and praise. It's a full cycle. What we do here, the First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth, is teach you how to be disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ. Christian means little Christ. The goal of our lives is to, look li- to live lives that look a little bit more like Jesus's. And one of the hallmarks of that life is a life of close connection to God feeling God's presence, knowing God's work in our life. That's what we do. Everything that we do, all the programming, the teaching, the outreach, the opportunities, all of it is about you having that transforming experience of God's grace in your life, working day by day to shape you into a life a little bit more like Jesus's. One of the things that's key, that's vital in that entire process is the process of thanksgiving and praise. Not only recognizing the good work that God has done in our life, is doing in our life, will do in our lives, the lives of the people we love, the lives of our schools, our communities, the world. Not only recognizing it, being appreciated of it, but also lifting up a word of praise and thanksgiving to the God who does all of it. Jesus does that, and so we do it too. We're going to spend three weeks on a sermon series called Praise God. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to praise God. We're going to celebrate the God who makes all of these things happen in our lives. We're going to begin our scripture with Psalm 63. I mentioned at the introduction of our service today, if you've got a physical copy of the Bible, I'd love if you'd have it in your lap. I'd love it if you highlight or underline or go along with us. If you've got a cell phone, you can type in Psalm 63 verses 1 through 8. That's going to be our scripture reading today. It's also going to be up on the screen, but I love when you have a physical copy that you interact with. We're going to be reading this psalm. It's a psalm that begins with a word of praise, with a word of celebration, with a word of thanksgiving. And you're going to see at the highlight, the beginning of the text, it's going to say a psalm of David. For those of you who are new to studying the Bible, or for those of you who are new to the story of faith, David lived about a thousand years before the life of Jesus, and his life was the pinnacle of the kingdom of Israel. He became king, and when the people of Israel recognized the reign of David as the zenith, the best that things got. And so when you're thinking about a word of praise that comes from David, it's very clear that this is a word of praise that's coming from the king, right? Words of celebration that come from him. Hear these words from the Psalm of David. Psalm number 63, verses 1 through 8. God, my God, David writes, it's you I search for you. My whole being thirsts for you. My body desires you. In a dry and tired land, no water anywhere. Yes, I've seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen your power and glory. My lips praise you because your faithful love is better than life itself. So I will bless you as long as I'm alive. I will lift up my hands in your name. I'm fully satisfied as with a rich dinner. My mouth speaks praise with joy on my lips. Whenever I ponder you while lying on my bed, whenever I meditate on you in the middle of the night, because you've been a help to me, and I shout for joy in the protection of your wings. My whole being clings to you. Your strong hand upholds me. God speaks to us through the reading of Scripture. Thanks be to God. David lifts up in this psalm a word of praise and thanksgiving. And one of the things that he does is look back on what God has done in his life for the source of his praise. 
But did you notice the words at the very top of Psalm 63 when you were reading your Bible? There'll be words in italics. They're kind of a superscript, an introduction to the psalm. They tell us where the psalm comes from because if you were just reading this and it was a psalm of praise and thanksgiving to God and recognizing God's goodness and God's greatness and what God has done in David's life, you might imagine that he's writing this from the veranda or rooftop of his powers, palace in Jerusalem. You might imagine that he's writing this after a great victory. You might imagine that he wrote these words of praise when his coffers were full of gold, his table was full of good food, and the people that he loved around him were happy, healthy, and safe. It'd be fair to imagine that that's when he wrote these words of praise. It's not true. The superscript, the introduction, the top lines of that psalm, those bits in italics say to us, a psalm of David when he was in the Judean desert. You may be familiar with the story of David, David and Goliath, the young shepherd boy who has this amazing, miraculous military victory over the Philistines, saves his people. That saved David grows up to be a revered military leader, to have triumph after triumph, to be loved and celebrated. King Saul recognizes him, celebrates him, even gives over one of his daughters to a hand in marriage. But did you know how far south it goes? Did you know that David is ultimately betrayed and hunted by Saul? Do you know that David is forced to flee? Do you know that everything that David has is taken from him? Do you know that the people who help David are sent to death? let alone what Saul wants to do to David himself. Saul has become so jealous and so paranoid and so worried about who David is. He's trying to kill him. He's chasing him throughout the land. It's at a period of time when he's in the desert, when the people who loved him have abandoned him, when he can't be by those that he cares for the most, when he has no future, barely any present, when he's at the most end of his rope, David writes these words of praise. He praises God in the middle of one of the darkest and hardest times, because even then, David remembers, I'm the David who slew Goliath, and God was there. I'm the David who's been miraculously successful in battle over and over and over again, protected by God. Praise God. I'm the David whose hand and life has been touched by God over and over and over again. Praise God. David does not know how this is going to go. He prays to God for help. But he starts that prayer with recognizing, remembering, and celebrating all of the amazing things that God has already done in his life. And he does that not when things are good, not right after he receives the promotion, not right after he gets engaged to the love of his life, not right after the birth of a miraculous child, not right after the purchase of a dream home, not right after the beginning of a successful retirement. He doesn't lift up these words of praise at a mountaintop moment. He lifts them up when things couldn't be lower for him. Praising God is celebrating and recognizing the work that God has done in our lives and saying, you, God, are the one who makes that happen. And it begins with us going back through our own stories and recognizing those times, recognizing those events, recognizing those answered prayers, recognizing those miracles witnessed because you have. I know you have. Just think about it. I was thinking about it this week. I was thinking about my own life, my own story, the things I've prayed for, I've hoped for. Y'all know I've prayed for a million things that didn't happen. I've prayed for a million things that didn't come to fruition in the ways that I hoped they would or when they would. But a lot of things have. I've had cancer twice. Stage four, had it come back even worse. Chance of surviving less than 40%. And I prayed to God to live. And I did. Praise God, the God who heals cancers. I prayed for a child. Wasn't supposed to be able to have one. Was supposed to be impossible. I prayed that my wife and I would be able to have a child, and we did. A perfect child. Praise God, the kind of God who makes miracles like that happen. I prayed to God for our family to grow. I prayed, God, God, our family's not done. Help us be the home for not just any kids, but the perfect kids, the perfect kids for us, the kids I can be the best father I can possibly be for. God, send them to us, and God did. 
praise God, the God who makes families happen. Praise God. And it's not just the things that have happened in my life. I mean, the things that I've witnessed happen just being a part of your lives. Can I tell you something that happened? There was a family in the Fort Worth community had a child. The child was sick, needed an emergency heart surgery. The whole community was praying. You may have prayed for them too. Tons of people praying for this child. I joined in prayer. I was praying and praying and praying for this child. I went to sleep. That night I'm sleeping. I have a dream. I don't remember dreams a lot. I'm not a big dreams guy. I had a dream that night of a child's heart being knit together, a hole fixed and healed. Next day the word comes out. Tests have been run on that child. Heart's fixed. Everything's fine. Praise God, the God who works miracles. Someone I know, life lost to addiction, right? Could not stop killing themselves, dragging themselves down. A hopeless case walked with them into prison. Life could not be more brutal for them. God healed them. God healed them. Healed the addiction. Healed the depression. Healed the despair. Praise God. A God who does that. Think on your own story. Your own story. Your own life. Your own family. Full of unanswered prayers. I know. Full of hard times. I know. Full of things that you wish were different. I know. And yet... And yet, your life has been touched by good news. It's true. Think of something that you prayed for that happened. Praise God. An opportunity that came to you when you needed it the most. Praise God. The opportunity to grow a family when you thought it was impossible. Praise God. Hope in a dark and terrible time. Praise God. Think of when you needed God the most, when you were at the end of your rope, and maybe it's right now, but do so with praise on your lips because God is the God who works miracles. God is the God who provides. God is the God who made the stars and the heavens and the earth and everything in it, and that God is at work in your life, reconciled, redeeming, and saving you through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Praise God, because that's who God is. Because that's what God does. Because that's what God is doing in your life right now. Praise God. And when I say praise God, praise God where you are. Say amen. Praise God. Say amen in your seat. Praise God. You in this room, say amen. Praise God because God is good and worthy of your praise. Don't just keep this to yourself. Share. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? Praise God. Lift up a celebration. Praise. I want to hear it. Email me. Go to the website, lmarshall at myfumc.org. I want to hear it. Praise God. My cell phone number is on there too. 682 Rev Lance. That's true. Text me. Praise God. I want to hear your praises because we need it now more than ever. Y'all, you may feel like you are at the end of your rope, but God is not done with you yet. Praise God. Because that is who God is. And God is worthy of your praise. Praise God. Let us pray. Great and loving God, whether we are at a mountaintop moment in our life or whether we are barely hanging on, God, you are our God. God, our lives are full of so many disappointments, so many hurts, so many hang-ups. They are also full of blessing upon blessing. God, our stories are full of your miracles. God, help us to look back on who you are and what you've done in us, through us, for us. God, we praise you again. It may have been yesterday. It may have been 75 years ago. We praise you, God. We thank you, God. We recognize you, God, for the healings that we've seen, for the miracles you made possible, for the opportunities you provided, for the people you brought together. Praise you, God. 
God, we are physically apart, but we are united. Through technology and your Holy Spirit, one church, always and forever, praying as your Son Jesus taught us to pray. And with praise, we say the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate with our time of Holy Communion today, I want to let you know that we always have a song immediately while we're receiving Holy Communion. When it's taking place in person, you're walking down the aisles, we have a song. Even when we're doing worship together at home, we have a song. The song is going to be a little bit different today. It's almost always live, led by our band. But we have a special tradition here at the church during Senior Sundays. We have a song that's led by our youth choir, and they sing a senior song, a song that's written specially for that year's graduating seniors. It's a song to celebrate, and it's a, one of the sacred rituals that Kat mentioned earlier in the service, and we wanted to make sure it happened again this year. I'm so blown away by Aaron Yipia, our youth choir director, and our fantastic youth choir for the way that they put together the senior song this year. So make sure to participate immediately after we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. And communion is something we do every single week, whether it's a mountaintop moment or a low moment, because either way, Christ is with us. We know this because on the day he was to give himself up for us, Christ took an ordinary loaf of bread gave thanks over it, blessed it and passed it and said, take all of you and eat. This is my body, which is broken and given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And with praise and thanksgiving, we remember that when Christ held up the chalice, he said to us, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we eat and drink it often in praise and thanksgiving for the Christ who gave his very life for us. No matter where you are today, if someone would take the bread or something like bread, maybe it's a tortilla, maybe it's a saltine, take a piece of it, break it, make sure everyone who's there with you has it. If you or someone else would hold on to the chalice, then take it and dip. Kids, this is a very special sign of Christ's love for us, a way for us to know that Jesus is with us now and every day. As we take and eat, may we do so with praise. With the, for the God who is with us now and always. Amen. Are you going to be able to give me the countdown? Thank you. It's broken, Mark. We can't get, yeah, we can't get it to work today. Cat, it's next Sunday. Is the youth meeting on Zoom? Yeah.
Amen. Thank you so much. And what an amazing gift our young people are. Thank you so much for putting together that song. And speaking of our young people, would you join me together as we pray a word of blessing for not only for our students, but for our teachers, our paraprofessionals, our school board members, our principals, our families, all the people who are together doing the best they can for all of our kids. Let's pray a word for all of them as they begin their new elementary school years, junior high, high school, and college, all of our families who are going back to school. Let's pray together. Great and loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, We pray with praise and thanksgiving for who you are and how you work in the lives of our families, our communities, and our young ones. God, we pray for all of our students, whether they're learning virtually or in person. God, we pray for our teachers, for our administrators, for our school board members. We pray for everybody who's so invested in the lives of our young people. God, we pray for their protection. We pray for their strengths. We pray for their courage. We pray for all of us to have your wisdom and guidance. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and say, Amen. Friends, thank you so much for being together for the gathering worship service. I'm so glad to be back. Thank you for joining us. A reminder that next Sunday we're going to have that 1030 opportunity to pick up those blankets for children's ministry. I know you got blankets at home, but you don't have these, and it's important that your kids have a way to feel what it is to be in worship. So I can't wait to see you next Sunday. Also want to remind you that we have that youth ministry Zoom meeting. So whether you're a teenager or you have young teenagers in your home, make sure to join that. Of course, information for all these things and so much more is available on the website. Now, wherever you are, would you please bow your heads and receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face raised to shine upon you. And as you go from this place, may you do so with the memory of God's good works and praise of God on your mind and on your lips now and every day of your life. Amen. Go in peace. Be well.